Jonathan Critchley has been inspired by the wide open spaces of the sea ever since moving to the south coast of England as a child. His first attempt at becoming a professional photographer was, by his own admission, thwarted by a lack of business knowledge, and he ended up working for a surf company, a job that took him to southwest France in 1998. Then, in 2006, on realising he hadn't taken any photographs for far too long, he left his job as European Marketing Director. He knew he wanted to make black and white work for the fine art market, and his images are now regularly used by luxury brands. Above all, the overriding themes of his work continue to be water and the sea. I visited him at his home near Buritz to talk about three of his images. Hi Jonathan, thanks for inviting us down to this lovely part of France, down in southwest France. You're very welcome. We're going to be talking about three of your prints today, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to. And this first one, I believe, was taken on quite a recent trip to Japan. It was. This was uh, just in March of this year. And uh, yes, it was my first trip to Japan. And uh, I had this sort of preconceived idea of what I wanted to achieve. But uh, the issue I had was that I was being shown some locations by a friend of mine who was a great landscape photographer, a great minimalist fine art photographer, a guy called Michael Levin. And he wanted to show me some of his, his locations for a potential workshop that we might be running together. And uh, whilst we were here, I, I just saw this particular scene and it represented everything I wanted to try and achieve with, with my Japan photographs, or at least my Eastern pictures. And uh, I like the idea of the branches hanging in and that sort of slightly uh, inked Japanese art sort of feel to it. But the issue I had is it's, it's, it will remain Michael's location. Well, I just didn't want to do anything commercially with this picture. And although I really love it, it will never be available to, to purchase as a, as a print, but it will be something that I shall always remember as being a wonderful moment. But I, at the same time, I'm a photographer. I love taking pictures. It's, it's, I saw the, the spot and I, 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 it, it all came together with the branches and, and, the, and the temple. Yeah. So I had to record it. And we paid to go in uh, by a ferocious elderly lady who was actually very charming, but very, <laughs> quite, uh, quite imposing. And um, she didn't tell us as we went in that 15 minutes later they were closing. Uh, so I then was looking around once we were basically thrown out. I, w I still wanted to shoot the temple and I just noticed this little pathway um, alongside the lake which was not included in the area of, of, of the temple. Purely by chance I probably wouldn't have seen that spot had it not been for this, this lovely old lady. And so presumably we're talking about quite a long exposure here. It was about 30 seconds I think so it was using a, using a a, a big stopper actually, just to smooth the water a little bit. It was, it's a lake so there wasn't, much, um, there wasn't much texture in the water but I just mm. wanted to make it go really smooth and just bring out the, the shadow and reflection of, uh, of the temple. Did you need to use any other filter as well? Yeah, I used my, my, sort of my favourite uh, of the grads. I used the 0.6 soft grad just in the sky, just to pull the sky down a little bit, to just uh, push the light back down into the middle of the photograph, something I do on pretty much everything. And it had been raining, but the rain had stopped, and it was just one of those lovely grey, murky days that I love to, to shoot in. Yeah. Why do you like those sorts of conditions particularly? I think because you're not competing against anything. You're not trying to, as, as we're seeing on days like this, you get, you get uh, it's a very beautiful hot day here today, and you get these patches of, of light, which are then very hard to control if they're not in the right place within a composition. So when it's a sort of gray, murky day, uh, you don't have that. It's like a blank canvas almost. And you talked about um, it having similarities to the work that you've shot in China. Are you, are you consciously looking to create a, a body of work that has a sort of cohesive feel like that. Too. I think so. I don't know. I don't really sort of have that goal, but I think I'm very drawn to that. I'd, I'd seen some work years ago of a Chinese photographer called Dong Hong Wei. Mm. I was so moved by his pictures, and I just wanted to try and create something along those lines, not to, not to imitate, but just at least it was certainly an inspiration. I think. So I think what's interesting about the contrast between the last image we spoke about and this one is that the last one was completely still. Mm. This one gives the impression of being mm. completely still and quiet, but I gather the reality was something quite different. I think with all my work, I try to achieve some sort of quietness. Um, I don't know why that happens. It's just something in me that wants to create that. And of course, the reality is those boats, when they're in full, in full sail, move incredibly fast. So the only way to keep up with them is either on a helicopter or on a very fast boat. Of course, it's very choppy, very bouncy. Yeah. So when you're shooting, you have a camera which is basically a large metal weight pressed to your head. Of course, the the, the resulting wounds can be fairly uh, can be <laughs> fairly, fairly unpleasant. 
So whereas in the last picture um, it was a very quiet moment, uh, this uh, and, and the resulting photograph was gave quite a, a, a quiet moment. Yes. This was the making of this was far from it, but I'm, hope, I'm hoping that, that the actual resulting print um, still gives that quietness. And so, how do you go about controlling your composition? Because it really is, a, it's a very controlled composition. You've got all this echo of the different triangles of the sail and the shadows mm. and the space that's created. Well, I think you have an idea of, of, well, I have an idea of what I want to achieve when I see the angle or the light on any particular sail. And then it's the relationship between myself and the skipper of the boat that I try and get into a position that we're, we pull alongside or at least to the angle that I right. want to be at. And then we try and maintain that. Uh, and then I'm, I'm shooting all the time. And of course, the benefit of of, of doing this as a job is that you only see the photographs I want you to see and of course there's another 4,000 which are complete rubbish maybe, <laughs> maybe the sky or my foot or you know something yeah. but you just hope that maybe you get two or three which are the ones that you want so a combination of sharp and that have the space that I'm after and luckily for me in this case there was uh, it managed to to happen. When you're dealing with big expanses of sky like this presumably again you're introducing filters to keep control of of the of the exposure and what's yeah, going on. Yeah absolutely filtration is very very important with this and you know back to my old favorite it was the 0.6 uh, soft grow which I use which is just tilted around uh, so that was kind of filling the right hand side of the frame. So, so it it's coming in from, from that side, this side, from that side down yeah. Exactly and then in post I would just I would just augment that I would just increase that a little bit just with uh, with dodging and burning and things but yeah right. it was there very much it's it's really important to control the light because obviously these sort of shoots are, are normally done in broad daylight, middle of the day. Uh, most of them are on the Cote d'Azur, so it's, it's very bright. Yes. Although the light is wonderful, it's very bright light. So it needs controlling and because the sails are fundamentally light coloured, it's very easy for them to uh, to blow out and mm -hmm. you get too much you get too much light in there. So controlling the light uh, with filters is, is very important. This was in the Camargue in, south, in the south of France, and um, uh, I, somewhere I've been going to shoot the horses for the best part of six or seven, seven years, I think now. It was a very, uh, again, a very noisy, very energy-filled moment. Uh, you can imagine the sound of these horses. This was actually a small part of a bigger group. Uh, but what happened was the, the, I got these four coming together, and uh, I was, when I was shooting, it was one of those moments when I thought, I don't know if you've had this, but mm. you thought, oh my God, I hope, I hope that I've captured that, because it just yeah. felt, you get that little sort of buzz of adrenaline when you, I just remember seeing those front legs crossed, uh, of, of the two lead horses. Luckily it came together, I managed it, it was sharp and uh, when I shot it um, I like to give things a bit of space so there was there was no sky whatsoever, there was no clouds, mm. uh, it was very still morning, there was no wind which is why you can see the reflection. Yeah. How do you kind of develop that instinct to know, I suppose to know that you wanted to follow that front group of horses rather than the rear group of horses, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's just be, being there and we've done it a lot and, you know, sort of try, uh, making mistakes. You know, it's just, uh, I, you realise the more you shoot that if you try and get them all in, even if they've split up, it just doesn't work coherently as, as, as a composition. So what you don't see in this photograph is, is sort of some way behind there are a group of horsemen, so horseback uh, riders, who are kind of encouraging uh, the horses to go. And similarly to the skipper of the boat skippers of the boats that you photograph you've built up a relationship with the people who work with these horses is that right very much uh, you know, some of them have become friends over the years and it, i think it's it's so vital in a way i mean i, I love that part of what i do is it's often it's, it's something that generally i don't have people in my photographs but mm. there are so many people involved in getting to that photograph and so again with this shot presumably was there a grad involved there was a grad involved. It's my favourite again. Uh, yeah. Really, really boring. I'm so sorry. So predictable. Mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, it's a 0.6 soft grad just in the sky. You can see the way the sky is just darker at the top. And I've just, again, I've just helped that on its way a little bit in post, but it was certainly there uh, initially. It's always there for me, that, that grad. I love it. And it's, it's something that really helps me uh, basically bring the eye back into the photograph and put yeah. all the light behind, uh, sort of in this case, behind the horses. It, doesn't yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you panning with the horses as they go past you? I am. That's pretty much what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm, so I'm hand-holding uh, and I don't use a tripod when I do this sort of thing. I like the freedom of being able to, to move around. And I obviously have the, the, the filter in the top and I'm just, as the horses are coming past, I'm just following and then deciding where the different groups are splitting up and working with them and using a relatively fast shutter speed, I think it's about a sixteen hundredth of a second to, okay. to achieve something like this. Because yeah, you're capturing the detail all the splashes, of the water, yeah. aren't you? It's, I've, I've made so many mistakes in the shoot, shooting this sort of stuff. I transitioned from doing 
very still work to wanting to push myself as a photographer to try and really sort of keep up the whole idea of minimalism to a certain extent and, and having quite a lot of space in my pictures but working with movement. And so are there, what are the rare instances where you might use a, a weaker or a stronger grad or aren't there many? There aren't many. Yeah. If, yes, if it was a very bright sky, then I'd obviously, you know, like soft grads for me and, and, and uh, the, the, the new medium grads, uh, something that I will use a lot uh, in, in my work. Um, it's just something that you, you get used to your own workflow, don't you? You get used to what yeah. you use and it becomes part of, of who you are as a photographer, I think. And so certainly my workflow using these Lee filters is, is, is an integral part of my, of my, my technique. Well, it's been really interesting to talk to you about these three pictures, all quite different and yet with that sort of signature style that we've discussed. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Elsa. Thank you for coming. Here, let's, let's propose a toast Cheers. to you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers.